Shalom, Israel. It's your brother Marcus G back with yet another truth for thought. First and foremost, I must give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. I must give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High. Secondly, come before you again, Israel. Now I'm Sounded like a broken record now from week to week, you know. Come before you again, Israel. Um, asking that you be charitable to our beloved sister, Queen Raya. The link to her GoFundMe is in the description. Um, at the very least, go to the GoFundMe if you cannot be charitable and donate at this time. That's fine. Read her story. Keep her in your prayers. I also want to ask that you keep this, this couple that I've been um, kind of counseling, well, not even kind of, counseling um, over the past week or so. Yeah, next Tuesday will be a week. Next Monday, Tuesday will be a week. Um, in a rough, rough spot, definitely being tested. Most high is trying them, and it is my prayer that they come out of this test refined, pure as gold. You hear me? Um, per the scripture, per the scripture. Um, that would be Queen Kenya and King. Jermaine. All right. Queen Kenya and King Jermaine. Y'all have to excuse me. I got my got my 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 beard plaited. Make it get a little longer here. Come on down with it. You know. Um keep them in your prayers. Keep also Queen Shay in your prayers. My spiritual auntie, Queen Shay. Keep also Queen Paula in your prayers and her family. Um, one of my spiritual moms, Queen Valerie, keep her in your prayers, one of my spiritual moms. Um, all of these people that I'm calling out are righteous Israelites, Israel. I want you to understand they are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Um, Queen Carly, Queen Tanya, uh, can't remember the queen's name off the, right now. I, I am so sorry. Um, King Gino, King Yada, King Gideon, my beloved brother, King Mike, um, King Orbia, uh, King Will, and his queen. I, I can, it's so many, Israel, those people for sure keep them wrapped in your prayer. For any that I may have forgotten, I apologize. I say to you right now, Salaki, um, keep your nation wrapped in prayers, Israel. Keep your nation wrapped in prayers. Thirdly, well, secondly, yeah, just on the second thing. <laughs> no, thirdly. First, it was giving all praise to the Most High. Second, it was Queen Raya and the people to keep in prayer. Thirdly, the Royal Gathering Part 2. All praises to the Most High. Um, you'll hear me make some references to the first Royal Gathering here today. Um, very, very powerful thing the first one was, but the second one, it only gets greater later. I was saying it during the first one. The second one is going to be even more so. Israel, with this as well, we do ask for your charitability um, in donating. It takes a lot for us to um, get this done. And um, we realize we can't do it alone. 
So we do reach out to you, Israel, um, prayerfully, that you all will, will help us achieve this and get this done. Um, you can read in Genesis 49 and 1, you can read the classic Zephaniah 2 and 1 through 2. We are to do this, Israel. We are to gather. So the link in the descriptions for the donations for the royal gathering. While I'm talking about the royal gathering, I myself will have on a pair of shoes. And I want to share my screen again. Let me share my screen. I myself will have on this pair of shoes, the white Passover, all praises to the most high shoes, all of these shoes, all four of the pair you see here on my screen, all created by one of your very own beloved brethren, one of my very own beloved brethren, King Quan. Now, I mentioned last week, not only will I have, I will have all four of these but I will have that white pair on. More than likely, might be the black pair though. Them white ones just so icy. But let me digress from that. Today, and it's already taken care of, I will be giving away a pair of these shoes today. Now, let me explain to you how this is going to go. The royal gathering has been coined a certain thing by our beloved sister, Queen Tanya. And it's the, I'm not going to fill in the brain, gathering, right? I'm going to give a clue as to what it is at the end of this truth for thought. And followed by that clue will be my email. Now, to win a pair of these shoes in your size and your choice of the color. After my email is presented at the end of this truth for thought. I need you to email me just what the Royal Gathering 2 has been coined as. Now, if you follow my beloved brother, King Mike Malice, you'll notice that I normally type, I have in the chat, um, Israel, remember to like and share both to support our beloved brother, King Mike Malice, and to help get the truth out to others. And you'll see pound the royal gathering too. And then you'll see pound the blank gathering. So I, I say it all the time. I say it all the time. My beloved brother, King Mike Malice, has said it before. So after you see my email address, because I was going to say Instagram, but there's too many folks, too many folks that follow me on Instagram. Y'all, the middle of this truth for thought, y'all be hitting me up with the name of it. Nope. Because <laughs> a lot of y'all pay attention and y'all see that I put it there. It's not going to work. You have to. Email me. You do not have my email address. You won't have it to the end of this truth for thought. Now, as I said, Ken Kwam developed, um, he, well, he created everything you see here on this website. The link to this website is in the description. Um, my beloved brother, our beloved brother, Ken Kwam's um, direct Instagram is in the description. 
as well as a link to his YouTube channel, but as he also does true music. All the those links are in the description. Again, I'm giving away a pair of these. It's already taken care of. All I'm going to need from you, all that King Kwam is going to need from you is a little bit of information. Israel, this is our people right here. This is one of our people. If you don't win this pair today, right? I want to see who will be set apart. Like I want to see outside of the person that wins a pair. Who else will be willing to come? I just want to see, just out of curiosity, do the royal gathering with a pair of these. I'm just, 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 I'm just curious, like. Sometimes I get real inquisitive. The link to his store in the description, Israel, I urge you, I implore you, go support our beloved brethren. Go support our beloved brethren. In fact, I don't, now I'm not going to say that because I don't know how many of y'all going to come to the royal gathering with a pair of all I know. Everybody show up with a pair of these shoes. I was going to say I might give away a friend's shirt to people wearing them at the royal gathering. But I got enough time to friends that many shirts. I just, I got a lot of other stuff I got to do in that time as well. So I'm not going to say that. I'll say this. Not only um, will you get a personal heartfelt thank you for 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 being there for your brother and being there for your neighbor um i, I definitely I, i'm just gonna be elated just to see it I'm not going to do anything special because, like I said, everybody come in there and have a pair of these on. Boy, and I be to say it, I'm going to give everybody a friend shirt. Man, I'll be fringing. I'll be putting fringes on shirts that night still. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I do urge you, I do implore you, Israel. Um, if even not, not even the, the, the shoes it's man, he got all kind of high quality apparel here. Just go there, support our beloved brother, right? It's one of his talents. King Kwam, love you. Also his queen does natural products. Um, I'm going to get more information on it from them. And um, Queen, if y'all will get that information to me, I'll have you in my next truth for thought. All praises to the Most High. Be it the Most High will, I will definitely do it. For my people, I will do it. Now, let me stop sharing that. Is that everything, King Mark? Let me see. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, that's everything. Now, let's get into the actual factual. Let's get into this truth for thought. If you notice the thumbnail, first thumbnail I did with me on it, had my, my fringes on, my royal family shirt with my fringes on, you know. And I looked at when I took that picture, and I looked at that picture, and I said, man, that picture, that picture says something. And I was actually in fault in that picture when it was taken by someone. <laughs> and 
And it was very recent. It was my aunt that took it. She took it. She said she had called me a couple of times, but I was in deep thought. So she took a picture of it and said, boy, do you see what you were doing? I said, I was thinking. And I was at the time. I, I was in a very deep thought about this truth for thought. Right? Um, not only that, and again, like I said, I've been dealing with um, a young couple, um, King Jermaine and Queen Kenya. And King Jermaine, I hope I said your name when I said the, the list of people that I, if I didn't, I apologize. King Jermaine is Queen Kenya's king. They are a married couple in the truth. And I was pondering about some things and they was in it and Because I, I thought that my truth thought was going to be something else. But it ended up being this. And now I see why. I will say that now. And you'll find out later. Because I'm going to put things in perspective for you. Be it the most highest will. But it, that picture says a lot. And we're going to start this off with some fundamental for this truth for thought, some fundamental scripture, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. We're going to start off with the Bible. I'm going to start off with the Bible. And uh, we're going to start at Ecclesiasticus 39 and 1. And I've brought this scripture out before. I brought this scripture out at the first royal gathering. Very first royal gathering. That is a hint. Ecclesiasticus 39 and verse 1. That is a hint as to why I know now why this was the true for thought to do. Ecclesiasticus 39 and 1, it reads, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof like i said if you look at that picture boy you can tell i was in some deep thought my aunt says she tried to call me three times but let me keep going and it's occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecy The more and more I, I go into these foundational verses for this truth of thought, there's a word that you're going to hear a lot of, and that's going to be prophecy or prophecies. So I want to go from there to Ecclesiasticus chapter 24, verse 33. Let's see what it reads. I will yet, this is the most high speaking, I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Again, keep all these foundational scriptures for this truth of thought. I'll write them down, bookmark them. We're going to get a lot of scripture today. We're going to look over a period of time today now i want to go to second esdras staying in the apocrypha second esdras chapter 15 we're going to give verses one through four behold this was a commandment given to ezra but let's listen to Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. I did this in one of the truth for thoughts that I'm going to talk about a little later on as we look back over time. 
and I went over the actual meaning of incredulity. Again, everything that's going to be in this truth for thought, you're going to find the link to it in the description. That's as always. I implore you all the, all the things, if you've not seen them, all the truth for thoughts that I'm going to talk about, I implore you go back and look over them. They're going to fill in a lot of blanks for you. One of them just so happens to, one of those lessons that I'm talking about just so happens to be the first royal gathering. Again, and I see now why this was the truth for thought for today, this set. Let's go from there to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter, and we get in from chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And they read, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take he oh boy it would do well Israel that you take he I'm saying that right now already Write these scriptures down, bookmark them, uh, make notes in them. I, it is very important. It's imperative. I promise you. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day star arise in your hearts. This is being said to a multitude of people. Kind of like I'm addressing you right now, Israel. Exactly like that. Verse 20. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture. Is of any private interpretation. I've always said. And I reference it straight from the Bible. Lean not unto your own understanding. Don't complicate simplicity. How many people have heard me say that? My people will complicate simplicity. Don't complicate simplicity. Verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as these were moved by the Holy Ghost. Holy men of the Most High spoke these things as they were led by the Spirit. That's what that means. I kind of talked about the Spirit just last week, especially someone who's teaching. It's all just making more and more sense now. To me, anyway, to me. I mean, I was there for last week's Truth for Thought. I did it. I know what it was about. It's just making more and more sense to me. Now let's go to Revelations 1 and verse 3. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 3. Let's see what he reads. Blessed is he that readeth. I talked about just last week. I literally gave a, a different verse that says to read. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Uh oh. Time is at hand. Time is drawing nigh. Y'all, anybody that knows me. Those, these are things that I've said repetitively and more and more so as time has progressed. So those are the fundamental 
scriptures for this truth of thought. Now, all these things, Israel, all these things, I mention because it is true that we are to observe prophecy. It is true that we are to read, be aware of, and watchful of prophecy. But not just because of that. We are to read, be aware of, and watchful of prophecy through signs and wonders. Not to mention, per Jeremiah 51 and 12, and I'm not going to read, I'm not going to say that whole verse, but there's a part of that verse I definitely want to clarify. Especially for you if you are here in God forsaken Babylon. Israel, we are to make the watch strong. Set up the watchman. When you're watching for something or watching something, looking right at it. There are things that you are looking for. We gonna get into some things over this truth for thought as we take a walk back in time. A look back over history. A look back over history for a complete year per man's calendar to the date of February the 18th. There is no irony. There is no coincidence. For those of you that understand why I just said that, I know you're starting to get somewhat of an understanding. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to fill it in. So now, we're going to look back over some lessons I've done for Israel. Addressing you, Israel, over the last year to the date of February 18th. 2022 for from 20 from February 18th 2022 all the way to today but we're gonna look at them in reverse order so we're gonna start with the newest lesson and work back to that eldest lesson right the first one I'm going to mention and all the links to all these truthful thoughts will be in the description First one I'm going to mention was done January the 7th, 2023, this year. It was entitled, Babylon Wants to Cut Israel Off from Being a Nation. Now, this was based from Psalms 83. Based from Psalms 83. In fact, if you would, now we're going to turn in the Bible to Psalms 83. So turn in your 1611, even though you should have already with my the foundational scriptures. Turn in your 1611 KJV, or King James Version of the Bible, with the Apocrypha. We're going to go to Psalms 83. And we're just going to get verses 1 through 8. Just going to get verses 1 through 8. So let's go to Psalms 83. We're going to get verses 1 through 8. A song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace and be not still, O God. This is a prayer where David is praying that the most high move and move swiftly. And what you're going to find is this is something that Israel 
has prayed for for a long time. This has been happening since way back then. But at one point in time, it was a prophecy that it was going to happen to Israel. Israel didn't listen. I think the exact way I said in the truth of thought, instead of plan A, which would have been Deuteronomy 1 through 14, Israel opted for, the majority of Israel opted for plan B, which was Deuteronomy 15 through 68. Way back then, things, this was a prophecy. Let's just keep going. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, against Israel, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom the, and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hoped the children of Lot Salah. I went over that. And that was led up to after I called out who the majority of those people, those walks of life. I did some truth thoughts about. I did one about Edom. I did one about Ishmael. I did one about Amalek. Those led up to that particular truth thought to the one Babylon wants to cut Israel off from being a nation. So I'm going to also, I'm going to stop showing my screen because I want to show something else. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go to some of the things that prove that. Some of the things that prove that. So I'm going to share my screen again. And we're going to go here. These are the states that pass laws restricting the teaching of racial history. For those of you that didn't see the truth of thought, racial history simply means slavery. There are several states that decided they don't want to teach about slavery. But that's a key and integral part, Israel, of your actual history. As you are descendants of said. So if they cut your history out, what do they do to you? I just want to read a very, very small portion of this. Because again, like I said, I did a whole truth for thought about this. And I'm not trying to make this truth for thought be long because I got to do all of this to get to the point of the question First, a statement, the signs of the times. And my direct question to you, Israel, do you see what I see? The latest culture war in education is being fought over how schools teach racial issues and episodes in U.S. history that has led to a slew of state legislative measures that limit or ban discussions touching on the sensitive topic of race. Some extend the prohibition to teaching about sex sexism. Future Ed has identified 47 bills from a slew of the states here in Godforsaken Babylon introduced or pre-filed this year in 23 state legislators that limit teaching on these topics. Alabama, Arizona, Idaho, Iowa, New Hampshire, Oklahoma, Tennessee. Hey, I'm from Tennessee. They, they wouldn't, 
they will they they would have a very big issue with me teaching true American history here in my in the state that I reside in currently in Godforsaken Babylon. Texas and Utah have enacted 11, those places alone, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's only nine states, but they have elect, they have enacted 11 bills amongst just nine states signed into law by their Republican governors. And another bill is awaiting signature from Alabama Republican governor. Governor K. Ivy. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this next thing. Because here, in that very same truth of thought, I showed you, Israel, all 74 of those bills and what state they were from. And they're all right here. Israel, these places, and I mentioned this in that truth of thought, these places want to ban the teaching of the history of your ancestors as early as kindergarten all the way through college. The link, the links to this was in that truth of thought. I'll have it in this truth of thought as well. You can read it for yourself. Don't believe what I say. Although I did go through a number of them in the in that truth of thought. And it reads it word for word. It tells you what the bill is for and who it's for. There is a reason. See, the world wants you to just forget your history as they want to just forget it. But it's people like me to keep bringing it up. They say, you know what? We're going to make this hard as possible for these people. Crafty counsel. Read about it in Psalms 83. Israel, I have been watching this before they had started, just like I watched when they started banning the Bible, which my beloved brother, King Mike Malice, did a, truth, did a lesson on that. I was about to call it Truth Without again this week. I did that last week. <laughs> See, he did a Truth Without. No, he did a lesson about that. About it. I think the title of it was like, The Banning is Beginning, or Let the Banning Begin, it, begin or something like that, Mike. Like, I'll I'll have I'll have it in the, the in the description. By the time I have the description totally typed up, I'll have the link to that particular lesson in this truth for thought as well. So I did this lesson on January the 7th, 2023. Also, I want to mention this. Remember I said her her um Jeremiah 51 and 12, we're supposed to set up a strong watch, right? Set up a watchman. I'm going to mention six lessons over the past year per man's calendar. That's an average of two months. Every two months, I average a lesson in regards to prophecy, whether it was a prophecy of old or a prophecy of new, like I said. This that we read in Psalms 83, at one point in time, it was a prophecy. All right. So now, let's stop sharing my screen. I'm going to mention the second. Or the next to newest lesson. The next to newest lesson. This truth for thought, which was done on April the 30th. 2022 was Are Your Eyes Open Yet Part 
too. Now, this particular truth for thought was about a blood moon that was scheduled to happen on March the 15th, 2022. I remember it. I have a, my memory is extremely good. On March the 15th, 2022, the world experienced the whole earth. Although all of them couldn't see it. Experienced one of the longest blood moons of recorded history of blood moons. This particular blood moon, from beginning to end, from when it began to eclipse, and show that red color. Lasted five hours and 19 minutes. Five hours and 19 minutes. And what I want to do is I'm going to get a couple of scriptures that I went over when I looked. And asked Israel. Back on April the 30th, 2022. Are your eyes open yet? Part two. So, share my screen again back to the Bible. In the Bible, I want to go to Joel 2 and 31. Joel 2 and 31. And it reads, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood and fire and pillar of smoke. Now, and I kind of did this out of order because I should have had you first. We're going to come back to this. Let's go to Genesis. We're going to go to Genesis 1. Yeah, let's go to Genesis 1. We're going to go to Genesis 1. We're going to get verses 14 and 15. Yeah, we're going to do it like this. We're going to go back to Joel. But way back in Genesis, let's look at what the Most High did and said with his creations. When he was creating in the genome, the beginning of things. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night and to let them be for signs. Signs is a key word here. Let them be for signs. And notice this is the first word of all the things that the moon and the sun are for. The first thing the Bible mentions. The first thing the Most High mentions is that these be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So in that order, he did not say it in that order for no reason, as he is not the author of confusion. I went over a bunch of scripture in that particular truth of thought, I remember. But let's get verse 15. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. so. This was all said by the Most High, right? That the first thing that the sun and the moon are to act as is a sign. Then for seasons and for days and for years, right? So now let's go to Joel 2 and 30. Now let's go back to Joel 2 and 31. And we're going to see about some of these Signs. Go to Joel chapter 2, verse 31, and he reads, even though we read it just before Genesis, I got to read it again. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. I want you to also pay attention to this. These things will happen before the great 
and terrible day of the Lord come. So these things are going to happen prior to the sky cracking. Yah will shine and chariots coming. Per the Bible, not per me. That's exactly what it says. And before the great and terrible day. It's going to be a great day. For a certain people. Not every damn body. It's going to be a terrible day for some other folks. Oh, yes, sir. But before that day comes, these things will happen. You notice the moon into blood. We're talking about the longest blood moon in history to date. One of the longest from beginning to end. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2 verse 20. And again, I brought this to you, Israel, prior to it happening. This was done April the 30th of 22. That particular lunar eclipse wasn't until May the 15th, 2022, almost two weeks late, a little over two weeks late. So now let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 20. I was setting up a strong watch. Even way back then. Acts chapter 2, verse 20. And it reads, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Now, it don't say how soon before. It doesn't say it'll be one day before. It don't say it'll be a year before or or. 365 days before. It just says before. Way back then. The title of it was. Are your eyes open yet? Part two. Let's go to Revelation 6 and 12. Let's just see. And all of these was. All these scriptures that I'm doing with each one of these was in the whole truth of thoughts. And they the all the these all these scriptures will be in the description of this truth of thought. And the link to each of those individual truth of thoughts will be in the description. And if you go to those truth of thoughts, in their description will be the same scriptures and more. So we're gonna go to Revelation 6, verse 12. This too was one of the scriptures used in that truth of thought. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. Now, I'm not saying to you that on April 15th, the sixth seal was open. The reason I even went here was because it still is showing that before the great and terrible day, it's going to happen. So I started looking. I started watching. Looking for the signs. Way back then, Israel. Have you noticed the signs of the time? Do you see what I see? So now I want to stop sharing my screen on that. We're going to get a little more information about it. I got some things for you to look at again in regards to this one. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Share my screen to this. Now, it's everything you need to know about the May 2022 total lunar eclipse. This was in the truth of thought. This was in that particular truth of thought. I went over the different types of eclipses there are, as you see right here. Um, and I had to get into this right here. 
where it says it's the May 2022 lunar eclipse, also known as a blood moon, right? It said blood moon is a term used to describe the moon's color during a total lunar eclipse. I want to ask you, is there a such thing as irony or coincidence that it is referred to as a blood moon? And even the Bible refers to the moon as being covered in blood. Is that irony or coincidence? Or the, uh, there are references in the Bible as the moon resembling the color of blood. Is that irony or coincidence? And it is not technically an astronomical term. The term's usage has grown in popularity and essentially blood moon and lunar eclipse are used interchangeably. I had to get that out there. Now, then you get to see um, where you could have saw the lunar eclipse. Now, this entire area here in Babylon, you could have saw it if you reside in any of this that's in this shaded area. The further out it gets, you could have seen it, but it was a little, it was not, it was vague. It was much more vague. Well, I just so happen to be residing in a place where you can see it the best, right? So I'm going to go and show you this. Now, here you initially see when the eclipse happened worldwide. But you see here the time in Memphis. That's where I reside. That's why it's showing it like this. But I want to go down here. Some quick facts about this eclipse. And I want you to look at where it says the overall duration right here. Overall duration, five hours and 19 minutes. That's the period between the beginning and end of all the eclipse phases. Now, I want to go back and show you. Here, to prove it, it started at 8.32 p.m. on the 15th of May. It lasted all the way to almost 2 o'clock on the 16th of May. Not only was that a sign, but that sign lingered for a minute, one of the longest in the history of recording the length of time of a blood moon. Some might say it's irony or coincidence. I will say to you, I read to you in the foundational, the foundational scriptures for this truth for thought. I want you to understand time is at hand. So no, there is no irony or coincidence that is one of the longest because time is drawing nigh. But, but, I want to ask you again, Israel. Because I was asking all the way back then. I'm going to ask again today. Are you no, Do you notice the signs of the time? Do you see what I see? I want to go to this right here. Just to kind of prove something. We're going to look at 2015. Um, here it is, way down here at the bottom, the one that I'm talking about, the total lunar eclipse, the 2015 into 2016. That's everything about it. Now, 
what you're looking at is um her places like NASA and um it's NASA's record of eclipses. Now this record includes all eclipses, whether they were numeral, partial, or a total. All right. So that's why when I went to find it, it was way down here. It was way down here. Way down here. Let's go back. Let's go to this right here. This is also from NASA. Straight from NASA. The total, when it was a total eclipse, was 85 minutes. When it was a partial eclipse, was 207 minutes. They came together to be that 500, that five minutes and 19 seconds. One of the longest in history. As you can see, Again, they show where you could have saw it. Of course, it, the further you get out from that center line, the more vague it is. All right. So that was that was in regards to let me stop sharing my screen. That was in regards to my goodness. Here we go with the technical difficulties again. That was in regards to the uh, that was in regards to the uh, the truth for thought known as are your eyes open yet, Israel? Again, he was looking at some prophecies. And very well, one could have been coming into fruition. One of the ones that really, one of the signs could have been right. That could have been one that, and I'm telling you, it was one, one of the signs. To be one of the, to be pretty much the longest eclipse in history. Now that's one of the signs. One of the, I think they got one that's like five hours and 32 minutes um, outside of that one. So, the next truth thought I want to, which this one was done on March the 5th of 2023. Again, we're just looking backwards. It was entitled The Fall of Babylon. Oh, I remember this one, boy. It was a scoffer's all about for this. <laughs> Now, this particular truth and thought, again, was done on March the 5th, 2022. It was based out of Revelation, chapters 18 and 19. In fact, I'd like to go there and share my screen. Share my screen, and we're going to go back to the Bible. Because I want to go to Revelation 18, and I only want to read verses 7 through 9. There's a reason for that. Revelations 18, verses 7 through 9. Now, you can go back and check that truth for thought out. I go through the whole, I go through the whole chapter, all the way over to verse, uh, chapter 19, right? A portion of chapter 19. But we're going to read Revelation 18, verses 7 through 9. And they read, How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. Remember that word sorrow is going to come up a little later. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow. And shall see no sorrow. Remember the word sorrow. <laughs> you will see it again. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine. 
and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Oh, let me stop sharing my screen. Because I'm going to share my screen again, but this particular time. I'm going to share it with this. Remember, I said something about famine, right? Look at this. Now, I'm going to tell you what this is. This is the world's six biggest corn producers, right? The world's biggest corn producers, right? Isn't that true for thought? I was talking about things like, at that point in time, a boat of sheep and lamb had went down, killed all those lamb and sheep. Weren't edible anymore. I even did a truth for thought about famine. It is here where I went in on the famine that's going on in Afghanistan and has been going on since 2018. But you're going to hear about places in the quote unquote Middle East. Some other things. I promise you I'm going to talk about them here today. Because I also talked about an earthquake that hit Iraq. Back in 2022, at that time, it had killed a thousand plus people. But here today, I'm just going to go on and talk about this right now. Here today, here recently, there was an earthquake. Seven point eight on the Richter scale. They still digging people out of rubble right now. They are still digging people out of rubble right now over there in that area. Syria and I forgot the other one. It starts with a T. It's on the tip of my tongue. It just won't come out. Israel. Are you noticing the signs of the times? Because I'm going to say some verses that's going to, they definitely fit in that in those prophecies a little bit later. Do you see what I see? Now, let's look at this. United States, number one, exporting corn, right? If you were in, if you came to the first royal gathering, you should have heard me talk about bricks. Well, bricks don't like NATO and their allies. Bricks consist of Brazil, Russia, Iraq. China and South Africa. Now let's look at this. United States number one is the exporter of corn. Number two is China. U.S. and China don't get along at all. Now do that. Then there's Brazil. Well, they're part of BRICS. BRICS don't like nobody that's with NATO or affiliated with NATO. Then there's Argentina. Then there's Ukraine. People that the U U.S. are helping, right? Then there's India. Now that's, wait a minute, that's not all of them. It goes on, I think. Nah, that's the end of it. Okay, so that's the end of it, even though it says, oh yeah, the six biggest corn producers. Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to share my screen to another screen.
And this is the top 20 the top 20 largest wheat exporters, right? So there's corn and there's wheat, two grains, right? Will there be a famine in the U.S.? I promise you, it is coming. Because the U.S. has to export somewhere. And when they, when they do the exporting over time, they're going to start running out of it. Well, the second biggest, they don't like them. The third biggest, they don't like them. Oh, boy, it ain't, it ain't boding too well. Do you see what I see? Just look down the pike. Do you see what's brewing? Let's look at the top 20, the 20 largest wheat exporters in the world, right? The very first one, Russia. Uh-oh. What the people here in Godforsaken Babylon, also known as the U.S., run out of wheat, the first person they have to go to is one of the nations against the nation. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about those verses. Then there's Canada, an ally to the United States. Then there's the United States. Then there's France. Boy, France and the U.S. been, they got a real sometimey relationship. Then there's Ukraine. Then there's Australia, Argentina, Kazakhstan, Romania, Germany, Bulgaria, Hungary, Czechia, Poland, Lithuania. So there are a lot of the NATO allies there, right? But even with all those NATO allies, the one and only biggest one is an Axie in Russia. Do you see what I see? What is very possible Right down the pike. I shared this in that truth of thought. Kind of went in, in a little bit deeper. Let me stop sharing my screen. Stop sharing my screen. We continue to walk back. Walk back all the time. Now I'm going to talk about that sixth lesson. Oh boy, that sixth lesson. Over... A one-year period per man's calendar where I addressed Israel about very possibly our prophecy, right? So on February 26th, this is the 5th of the 6th, February 26th, I did a truth for thought entitled Israel, are your eyes open now? Mm -hmm. Now, this was one week after the one that I'm going to mention as the sixth. This was literally. done a week after that sixth lesson right so this was done on february 26 2022 and we're gonna go to the bible real quick because we gotta get some verses to see just what it was based on okay so i'm gonna share my screen back to the bible and i'll tell you it was based on israel and observing prophecies. The reason I did this one was pretty much because of the one I did the week prior. And you'll understand when I get there why I did it that way. So I want to go to Revelation chapter 22. I'm going to go to Revelation 22 because this was in that truth of thought. 
We're going to get verses 18 through 20. Now, listen to this, Israel. And this all was in regards to prophecy. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life. I did a truth thought about the book of life as well. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Remember that those were this book because this this royal gathering, I'm going to be talking about this book. This book, I'm going to be talking about the complete Bible. I'm going to be talking about this book. But I want to ask Israel, and some people may know this, some may not. Is there a precept for this? Is there a precept for Revelation 22? 18 and 19. And I'm going to give y'all a little time. To think about it. Is there a precept. To this. And again. Th this truth for thought was done. Back on. February 26, 2022. And it was in regards to prophecy. So I think I've given y'all enough time. I want y'all to go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's see if there's a precept for this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Let's read this. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish out from it. Uh-oh. That sounds like a precept. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. So you're not supposed to add to or take away from any of the word. Same thing that was said back in Revelation 22, 18 and 20. But now I want to go back to Revelation. Because again, this was talking about this particular truth thought was talking about. Israel and observing, understanding the importance of prophecy and observing prophecy. So let's go to Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to give verses 7 through 10. Three verses, that's all. Yahweh said this, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which shewed me these things. Then saith he unto me, see thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. So the, the, the heavenly host, the angel is telling John, get up. Because it looks like you're trying to worship me. I know I'm not what you're supposed to worship. I'm but a fellow servant just like you. Verse 10, and he saith unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for time is at hand this same heavenly host that showed John these revelations told him don't hold your tongue run go tell that because time is at hand time is drawing nigh time is Drawing, nah, I say it so much. We saw it a little earlier in the scripture. No irony or coincidence. So 
So this was this true for thought. <laughs> and it just further reiterates why we are to set up a strong watch. Time is at hand. We have to watch, observe. Look for the signs because time is at hand, Israel. So now we're going to look at the very last. Very last lesson that I did over the year. To this day. Because on this day, on this day, Per man's calendar, February the 18th, 2022, we had the first royal gathering. I told y'all it makes perfect sense to me now. One year to the date, we had the first royal gathering and I was calling out what very well could have been prophecy coming into fruition. Now, mind you, I had been watching this situation from six months prior, ever since the end of October, beginning of November, 2021. This particular lesson was called Gog and Magog and was done at the first royal gathering. Over the past year, for an average of two months, every two months, Israel, I have literally asked, are your eyes open? I've given you I've I've, I've literally shown you where the most high is showing signs and ask, are you looking? Are you paying attention? Time is at hand. Time is drawing nigh. I literally had just realized when I started looking at the list of the lessons I was going to look over. When I, and this was when I was recording this. Is February the 18th, 2023. That happened on February the 18th, 2022. Per man's calendar. Again, per man's calendar. So now we're going to look at the last lesson. And I'm going to look at over the course of a year. To the date, her man's calendar. Today is February the 18th, 2023. Per man's calendar. Last year, February the 18th, 2022. Per man's calendar. We did the first royal gathering. One year to the date. No irony, no coincidence. And again, that's per man's calendar. No irony, no coincidence at all. I thought I was going to be doing my truth for thought on something else. The most I said, no, 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 sir, son, it'll be this. And it all makes sense now. My beloved brother, Mike Malice, came out of Matthew last night. The, the three precepts I'm going to bring out in regards to the Gog and Magog lesson that I did was right there. I'll tell you, one of them was right there and there was someone in the chat that called out a second one and I said, that's good because I noticed it. I said, but I wonder if, and it was a queen, I wonder if she knows that third precept and she literally typed in the live chat, called it out. And I told her she could start by looking at Luke 21. She looked and she, she posted it in the chat. My beloved brother Mike Malice did a beautiful, excellent, wonderful lesson. 
Now, again, I knew when I was going to do my lesson. I don't have my lesson plan together, right? But I had no idea he was going to come out of Matthew 24. I had no idea how he was going to do his particular truth. Well, not truth for thought. I did it again. How he was going to do his lesson. Although I knew how I was going to do my truth for thought, right? There is no irony or coincidence. None whatsoever. To that queen, if you're here, I want you to know when you type that last precept, I said all praises to the most high. I typed in the chat to Mike. <laughs> right when he went over Matthew 24, 6, and eight, 6 through 8. Now I'm going to be talking about in fact, my, the title is going to be Do You See What I See? So what I want to do is I want to get I want to get I want to get down to verses. I'm going to show my screen. Share my screen back to the Bible. And we're going to go to Matthew 24. And we're going to get we're going to get I'm going to go ahead and get six all the way through eight. Matthew 24. I made a mistake in press four. Matthew 24, verses six through eight. Okay. There's a reason I'm including verse eight here. I actually could include verse nine and 10 as well. In fact, I am. I'm going to say Matthew 24, 6 through 10. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Again, these were scriptures that I had brought out way back a year ago in regards to Gog and Magog. And I'm going to give you a little more background on it before I, before I read this. I had been following what was going on in Russia and Ukraine for six months prior. Yep, February, January. February, January, December, November, October. Yeah, right at six months prior from October, end of September, beginning of October, all the way till February the 18th, right? The reason I had been really kind of looking at it is because I already had the understanding that Magog was a place. I knew exactly what their place was. If their place is Russia, the land of snow and mountains. If you want to verify it and prove me, you can look in the Blue Letter Bible. Any verse that has Magog in it, look at the inner linear of it. Look at the Strong's definition for Magog. I have no problem with being held accountable and proving myself. And I think I said this last Sabbath, if not a couple of Sabbaths before. I understand that I must prove myself to you, Israel, as I even mentioned just last Sabbath, you are to prove people, especially people that you're going to learn from. Right? So, Magog definitely was a place. It was Russia, for sure. But Gog is a person. In fact, per scripture, Gog is the ruler of the land of Magog. So, it, I had literally said, now Russia is definitely Magog, but who very well can possibly, quite possibly be Gog? Not that he was, but quite possibly can be. I went over scripture showing where 
Gog would leave Magog and into war, world war. It's in, it's in the scripture. Many nations will be at war. NATO is made up of 33 nations. I brought that out at the royal gathering. If you've not seen it, the, the link to it is in the description. So I even said, you got 33 nations in NATO. You got the U.S., you got Russia, you got Ukraine, at the very least. Very least. You got 36 countries right there, right? Well, China don't like you. China is part of BRICS, and Iraq don't like the U.S., and Iraq is part of BRICS, and boy, it, 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 the sum of countries just gets greater and greater. Look today. The issues that China and God forsaken Babylon or the U.S., the issues they have right now today. Do you see do you see what I see? So now that I kind of gave a little breakdown, I ain't going to give you that whole lesson. I didn't give you any of the whole lessons over all the ones that I didn't know. Just a quick summation. And it's a very quick summation of them all. The links to all of them will be in the description. If you've not seen them, I will tell you what I would do. I would go see them. They will fill in a whole lot of blanks for you. So now I want to go over these three precepts that this queen, she, she typed this one as Mike said, it, although I put the scriptures right there in the chat. She typed it, and I love that. I love that because... I'm trying to keep up with Mike. I don't know where you're going to go next. So to have someone that actually types the whole scripture, that's beautiful. Because while they type in that one scripture, I'm with him three scriptures down, two scriptures down the line. Right? I loved it. But I noticed it. Then I noticed she pulled a precept from Mark 13. And I asked, I said, beloved, that's beautiful. That's so, let's see you top that. I just mentioned this last Sabbath. Let's see if you've studied to show yourself approved. There's another precept. She said, link it came. But it put basically for me to type it in. I see it start by looking at Luke 21 and 9. She went straight to it. She typed it in the chat. I'm thinking to myself, I'm looking straight up. I'm already facing the east. Looking straight up, all praises to the most high. So let me go on and get this. Matthew 24, chapter, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. I said at the first royal gathering, I said it just like this. Israel, be not troubled. Just like that. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That is key. It's very, very key. Even when these things must come to pass, understand, Israel, that is not the end. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. I talked about an earthquake in Iraq. Killed over a thousand people. Now, just here recently, wasn't there an earthquake? Like I said, in Turkey and Syria. Do you see 
what I, are you paying attention? Are you noticing the signs of the time, Israel? Verse 8, all these things for you, Israel, understand this. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. Remember the word sorrows. I said it earlier. I'm saying it again right now. All right. So now I want to go to Mark. Let's go to Mark. We're going to go to Mark. We're going to go to chapter 13. We're going to get verses 7 through 9. Right? And I'm going to come back to the these same verses. I'm going to do again before we leave. We ain't got much left. I promise you, Israel, that I'm going to touch on. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled. For such things must needs be, these things must come to pass, but the end shall not be yet. For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. That troubles, sorrow. These are the beginnings of sorrow. Remember that word sorrows. I'm, I'm keep telling you that till I get to where I'm going with it. Now let's go to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. And we're going to get verses 9 through 11. And they read. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, wars and rumors of wars, for these things must first come to pass, same thing, but the end is not by and by, same thing. Now, all of these are being said by Yahweh, what you're seeing with these precepts. Luke saw it and heard it over here. Mark saw it and heard it right here. Matthew saw and heard it right over here too, on this side. This is all about the same account. Yahweh is saying this all at one time, but three people are witnessing. Let me say this. Verse 10. Then he said unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs. Great sign shall there be from heaven. Now, I remember distinctly when we read back in Genesis 1, verse 14, the first thing in regards to the sun and the moon was that they were for signs. I remember that the Most High said that they were in the firmaments of the heavens. There's no irony. There's no coincidence. The Most High does not change. He is not the author of confusion. But Yahweh shall see it all. Day. And that's, those are just the only things I'm going to say in regards to the first royal gathering where I um, taught about Gog and Magog. If you've not seen any of those lessons, The links to the description, the links to all of them will be in the description. Okay. So I ask you today, Israel, literally one year per man's calendar, from the very first lesson that I ever did in regards to prophecy. That lesson being the one I just mentioned, God and Magog, at the first royal gathering. I ask you now, and I've asked in different ways over this year. Are your eyes open now? Are your eyes open yet? I've asked in various ways. So I'm asking again a different way. Israel, 
are you noticing the signs of the time as time is at hand, time is drawing nigh? Do you see what I see? See, the reason I keep asking this is because her Jeremiah 51 and 12. It says to set up a strong watch. Set up the watch men. The word men is plural for the word man. There has to be others. There have to be some people of Israel that see what I see. Because I'm literally seeing what the Bible is saying. So, again, Yahweh Shah said all of those that we just last looked at in regards to God and May God. I want to look at something else Yahweh Shah said. Okay. Let's go to John chapter 4 and verse 48. Let's go to John chapter 4 and verse 48. Let's see what it says. This is in regards to Israel. John chapter 4 and verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, Jesus is who the world ignorantly calls. The true Messiah. Of Israel, Yahweh Shai. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. My people, unless they see the signs and wonders, they won't believe. Now, my question though is Israel, with even that knowledge, have you been paying attention to the signs and the wonders? that have come about at least in the last year to the date per man's calendar that I have addressed things, signs with you. Let's go to Acts. That's, that's your house, right? Your house, right? Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 19. Let's just look at this. Acts chapter 2 and verse 19. And it reads. And I, this is from the most high. And I will shew wonders in heaven above. Again, you can reference all the way back to Genesis 1 and 14. First thing that, that the, the sun and the moon are for are for signs and wonders. And signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Are you paying attention, Israel? Are you noticing the signs of the times? Do you see what I see? From there, I want to go to Second Esdras. Second Esdras chapter nine, and we're gonna get verse six. Let's see what it reads. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonderful and powerful works and ending in effects and signs. Are you, Israel, noticing the signs of the time? Do you see what I see? So now I said we was going to go back to them. I want to go back to Matthew chapter 24. 
Back to Matthew chapter 24. Right? And we're going to go again from 6 to 9. But I remember I said, keep that word, sorrow. Sorrows in mind, right? So I'm going to read it again. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, so that ye, so, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the, the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, we're seeing it. Kingdom against kingdom, we're seeing it. And there shall be famines, we are seeing it. I talked about a famine that's been going on in Afghanistan since 2018. And pestilences, oh, not only that, we can see down the pike, as I kind of addressed a little earlier, how famine will even be coming here. See, a lot of people don't mind, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of, even in Israel. First, there are people that don't want to hear that anything's going to happen here. Just like we read back in um, Revelations 18. She sits upon a throne and says, that's, that's the embodiment of people here in God's song forsaken Babylon. She sits on the throne and says she has done no wrong. <laughs> so they don't want any, so no wrong shall come to her, for lack of better terms. Just a summation of um, Revelations 18. I forget exactly which, which particular verse that is, right? So there are a lot of people, they don't want to hear that anything bad is going to happen here, right? Then you got People that want something bad to happen here, but not to them. They want, they want things to happen here, however, not to them. When things are going to happen here, it's going to happen to everyone. Now, understand this. When famine happens here, it's going to happen to heathens, people of Israelite descent, whether they know who they are or not, and Israelites, people of Israelite descent, whether they're righteous or not. Let me say that. It's going to happen to everyone, right? And there are people that they don't mind it going up in a, a, a plume of smoke. They don't mind all that, but they don't. They, they, they don't want to hear it. And you won't be able to eat either. There will be a famine. <laughs> it is right here in the Word. Now, it is true that there will also be a famine of the word. Yes, that is true. But there will be a famine, like a famine of bread. When I talked about famine this year, there's a famine of bread or of food and a famine of the word. There will be both here in God forsaken Babylon. And there are people, even in the truth, they don't like to hear that. Mm -mm. But I am not here. To please man. It is the truth. It's going to happen. And earthquakes in diverse places. Now that leads to. For the righteous Israelites. Verse 8. All these are the beginnings. Of sorrows. Keep it in mind. I'm going to go to the next one. We're going to go to Mark. Chapter 13, verses 7 through 9, right? I'm going to run through it fast. So we got it, the gist of what it says. 
At least I'm prayerful of such. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows for you righteous Israelites. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Okay. Now let's go to Luke 21. Let's go to Luke chapter 21, right? And we're going to get verses 9 through 12. And they read, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then he said unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs there be from heaven. Those fearful sights, sorrows for you, Israel. Now, why do I, why am I harping about sorrows? Well, I've also done true for thoughts. In regards to these things, all within that same year, all within that same year per man, and I'm going to call them out from newest to oldest, sorrows, I did a truth of thought known as sorrow, and all these will also, the links to all these will also be in the description. I did. What are you preparing for, Israel? And I did. Temptations, trials, and tribulations. Jacob's, and in parentheses, Israel's trouble. All about your preparation for his sorrows and sorrow. For the last whole year, Israel, I have been setting up a strong watch for my nation. I have set up a strong watch for my nation. And I know I'm not alone. I know my beloved brothers, King Yah Gideon, King Yada, King Mike. They've set up strong watch for our nation. Right alongside of me, right? King Gino, right alongside me. Queen Tanya, right alongside me. Queen Rita, I couldn't remember your name for anything at the beginning. I, I just, the R was just sitting right on my tongue. Queen Rita, right alongside us, right? Queen Doris, right alongside us. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else, son. Huh? If I'm forgetting anybody, again, like I said earlier, I apologize to Lockie. As in Jeremiah 51, 12, it literally says, watch men, not watch man. My question is to you. Are you noticing the sign of the time? Do you see what I see? In a little bit more layman's terms, are you setting up a strong watch, Israel? Now, let me stop sharing this. With that, Israel, be at the most high we. Till next time, it's your brother Marcus G. I love you and Shalom. That's the cue for the clue. <laughs>